Hi, my name's Andy Pitts and uh, welcome to my video. Uh, a while back, my church, Trinity United Methodist Church in Squim, Washington, uh, asked me if I would consider working on a design and then building some pieces for the sanctuary. Specifically, they were looking for an altar, a pulpit, and a baptismal font. And there was some special requests in there. Uh, curved pieces were preferred to straight pieces. Um, getting somehow lavender into the pieces because Squim is known for its lavender. Getting the Trinity into the pieces. And uh, so I went to work. Uh, first I sat down with a drawing pad just to kind of sketch out some ideas and came up with, uh, you know, what I thought would be a good path to follow. And then I went to the computer, which is how I do my designing, using computer-aided design, and uh, came up with the, you know, the really specific designs and made renderings. And here's a picture of a rendering of the pulpit. Uh, this rendering is, you know, I could actually build from this. I could take dimensions off the computer and build from it. So it's the real thing. And uh, at that point, it was uh, time to, to go to work. And so uh, the, um, the video series here, uh, it covers that whole process, but I'm dividing it into small pieces, uh, you know, 10 minutes or so per video and covering the various aspects. So this first video is going to cover the design process on the computer. So you'll hear me in the background, but you'll be seeing the computer screen and show you how we did the altar and pulpit. The baptismal fonts are kind of a separate building process, so that series is going to come later. Right now we'll concentrate on the altar and the pulpit, which are built very similarly. And then uh, the next video will cover uh, how, we did the, how I made the bending forms for bent laminations, and we'll go in later on actually making the laminations and veneering and so forth until the pro project is done. So I hope you enjoy this, and now let's get on to the computer. I'll bring up the layers here, and I'm not, and not in any particular order, but I started with a base and a top, which uh, were the approximate dimensions that we wanted for the piece. I knew I wanted the base to be fairly stocky, and uh, the top a little less so for proportion, and, and that we wanted to use uh, a northwest wood cedar, fir, something like that for both these pieces. I also knew, knew I wanted some curves on the sides so I went and designed side panels and you can see this gives you kind of an uplifting you know arms spread high uh, kind of a look. This would be a bent lamination that I would make and also it's hard to see but if you notice, the bottom of the side is narrower than the top of the side. So the curve actually comes out towards the front and towards the back as well. So let me go ahead and put the front panel in. There's not going to be a back panel. It's going to be open so that things can be stored inside this area. So this front panel curves out towards the viewer as well as up to the right and up to the left. Uh, with that basic design in mind, I wanted to see how this would look with materials on it. So uh, one nice thing about this CAD program called Design CAD 3D Max, it allows me to put textures <coughs> on materials. And I can take a JPEG uh, of uh, a type of wood, for example, a species of wood, and make that the texture. <clears throat> so if I shade this for you, I'm going to show you what the textures look like. Okay, so you can see here that we have, I tried to use uh, red oak in a uh, rift sawn pattern for the front and the sides and use uh, cedar for the top and bottom and I thought I'd put in a little texturing either using a chisel or an adds. Most likely I'll use a chisel. Uh, 
to, to give this kind of a, a nice look. And uh, then I also thought, well, we need to have some corners on this. And so let's go ahead and put a little corner trim in there. Okay, now you can see the corner trim. And I thought, you know, I'll probably make this out of cherry. And uh, then I thought, okay, well, the front, we, we really like to see something on the front instead of just plain. And so uh, I went ahead and designed using uh, Aspire software, which is uh, uh, used with my uh, computer-aided design and my uh, uh, CNC machine to come up with a, um, a look that was going to be uh, what we wanted for the Pacific Northwest. Okay, and so you can see I've got a, a texture here that's actually a photograph of a carving that I can make using a spire where we have the mountains and we have the, the symbol for the Trinity and some lavender coming out. So let's go ahead and put it all together. And you can see about how that works. So, next step is to make bending forms for making this bent lamination. Here's the front panel and edge on, you know, if I'm looking from the side. And so I needed a form with that same curve and I need to have some uh, platen area in between. So, and you can see I've got three layers of material, two three sixteenths inch layers of plywood and then a one eighth inch layer of hardboard that would go on this frame. And the idea is you would take this this whole sandwich of of form and and material for the front and put it into a vacuum bag and pull a vacuum and that would glue this laminate into into the shape. And this laminate would be made of two layers of bendable plywood sandwiched between three different layers of veneer. So you'd have veneer, then bendable plywood, then veneer, then bendable plywood, then veneer. You put those all in with glue on the surfaces and pull the vacuum and this would end up staying in that shape. And then later on you can veneer the front and the back with your show veneer, the final, final veneers. So to, uh, to make this bending form, uh, I want to went ahead and set it out horizontally here so that I could um, actually work this. You can see what I ended up doing was designing with, I think there's 23 ribs here that have that bend on them. And they are glued on top of a bottom plate. And there are a front and back sides glued. You can see them better in this side view over here. And for the first three rows or so of ribs, I put in these spacers. You can see them on end over here on the left on the top view. Maybe it's best easiest to see. Spacer, spacer, spacer. <clears throat> and these prevent the vacuum, uh, you know, the forces built up from crushing these sides in. I did the same design here for the side bending bending form. Okay, and here you can see this was the original shape that followed the shape of the side and I just rotated it down horizontally so I could build the form and you can see how the the layers of material fit over this and that's that's the form for the sides okay so with these forms figured out and all the parts figured out I then went to um, a different view here to figure out how much material I needed to cut all this stuff out okay so if I go to a two-dimensional view and draw the shape of a piece of half-inch MDF, I found that if I use three 
pieces of half inch NBF, I could make all the ribs and bottoms and sides for not only the altar bending form, you know, the, the two that I needed for that, the front and the sides, but I could also do the same thing for the pulpit. And I'll show you the pulpit in a minute, but uh, the pulpit required the same form for the front and the side. So I only needed one form for the bending form for the pulpit. I needed two for the uh, altar. <clears throat> I also drew in the size of a piece of plywood that would represent the two plies of 3 16 inch and the and the hard board for making these these overlay um, layers <clears throat> that would be glued to the ribs of the form. And uh, so, you know, I've got one for the front of the altar, one for the side of the altar, and one for the pulpits. And I'll make a, a second piece of hardboard for each that will go on top of the glue stack when I stick it into the vacuum bag. The pulpit was designed similarly, and I'll put in all the layers of that and show you how that works. Okay, we've got a base. Um, We've got the uh, part that holds the book. We got the side panels. We've got the front panels, the corner trim, and I think I used top number three for this. That's the wireframe view of what the pulpit would look like. Now, if we take that and texture it, you come up with something like this. I'm still not exactly sure about the carving and so forth, but the, that's the last step in the whole process. So we can work on all the bent laminations and the top and the base. Uh, but, you know, here in this one depiction, we've got three elk in the uh, prairie with the mountains behind and the cross and then the sun with seven big rays. And, you know, this is just a concept that we can play with a little bit. But the... Uh, the height of this is is uh, correct. I believe we wanted about uh, three feet from the base to the uh, bottom of where a book would uh, sit on here. And then there's a little space on the sides if you want to lay the Bible or something like that on there. And uh, you still have a little real estate up here if we decide we want to put something on there. Maybe just leave it like it is. Okay, so now we're ready to actually go out into the shop and... Uh, make the bending forms.